you've announced a bus that can go 350 miles now, farther than any car, any Tesla especially, can go on a single charge. Has this boosted orders? What's been the response? Yeah, absolutely. We, we made the announcement at the American Public Transit Association annual conference in Los Angeles. We already had a significant number of orders and cities that were signed up to deploy. So right now, 5% of major transit agencies in the U.S. are already deployed with Proterra or have placed orders. Uh, we're still uh, registering and processing the new demand based on the announcement that we've made, but we've already selected the early adopter or pilot customer. It'll be in Southern California with Foothill Transit. But we've, um, we've been swamped with interest. I saw an article earlier today that Houston Metro is going to be demoing a Proterra bus. So if we're if we're demoing electric buses in Houston, this is probably a pretty good sign. Now, talk to me about how you see electric, and I would also love to know about self-driving buses sort of rolling out as compared to cars. Like, do you see buses going electric, going autonomous before cars? I see, and I think we're already seeing uh, transit vehicles go electric faster than cars mm. because their fuel savings, their fuel consumption is higher. So the demand is greater if you're running a heavy vehicle and you're burning 10,000 gallons of fuel per year. We're already seeing the penetration of autonomous vehicle technology in transit. We currently use it to help with the alignment of the charger so the bus can basically charge itself. I think it'll be a little while before in a mass transit application we completely remove a human being from the vehicle because the human does more than drive. They help um, wheelchair passengers, uh, they help students, uh, they help tourists. So. When you only have one driver assisting 80 passengers, the economics are pretty good. So I think we're moving into a world where we're going to have electric self-driving taxis, moving into a world where we have electric trucks and buses. Um, and I, probably the last thing, though, that will go completely driverless would be a high uh, passenger application. Interesting. David, jump in here. Well, I wanted to ask, Ryan, first of all, I think there's a lot of reasons why cities would want these, even beyond the energy sa the, the, the energy efficiency, the uh, carbon neutrality, et cetera, of electricity compared to the way we power things now. The noise, as a New Yorker, the noise of buses is a major problem in this city, and I would think just quietness is a, is a value in itself. So that's not even a question, although Ryan might want to grab it. But I wanted to ask you, Ryan, how, what is the price differential between these and the traditional buses that a city like New York is buying? So I, I think there are two reasons that we're driving a lot of demand for this category for electric transit technology. One is the fact that the vehicles are now fully capable of replacing the traditional diesel bus. The other, though, is the pricing. So at this point, um, a, an electric bus is the same price point um, with your uh, configurable items as a diesel hybrid. So for a city like New York or Baltimore, San Jose, that's already buying diesel hybrid buses, the price differential to go full EV is very small. And I think it's one of the reasons why the market has really ramped up. We've effectively hit product market fit in both range and in pricing. And I know you're going after you know, transit systems first, but you're also looking at new verticals, airports, for example, commercial customers. Tell me about that. Well, I'll be in Montana next week for one of our first campus deployments. So we'll be deploying three vehicles to a student-led um, and student-operated university transit system. We're also seeing, though, as you said, this technology's got a lot of interest from airports. There are already RFPs where airports are looking to procure these vehicles. And there's a lot of inbound interest from truck companies that are looking to take this battery technology and drivetrain into other heavy-duty applications. So when we did the test, uh, or the test drive of this vehicle, we drove a 30,000 pound vehicle 603.2 miles on a single charge. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, a bus is, is a class seven or eight truck that's optimized to carry human beings. You can also carry a lot of cargo, a lot of goods movement with that same type of technology. So I think you're gonna see this technology go into a lot of other markets. Quickly, plans for an IPO? You've, you've been through it before. I've been through it before. Um, we have plenty of orders, and I think we're, we're plenty big enough at this point to make that transition. I will say um, I am enjoying being the CEO of a private company for a little <laughs> bit longer. So I think when our, when our board makes that decision and when we decide, I'd say, to lower our cost capital, we'll take that step. Uh, but right now, we have plenty of access to capital and plenty of growth.